The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 29th Dinah Disciple webinar. Elena is here, and she'll be starting in just a second. But I want to run through the normal uh, protocols and everything. Um, she's got a lot that she packs into these, and so she does ask that you wait until uh, she's stopped and specifically asked for questions. Um, and we will start with her meditation. So there you go. Over to you, Elena. Thank you, Bill. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, and as usual, uh, before we start, we make a, a short alignment of the group field. So withdraw your attention from the lower sense perceptions and achieve stillness in the three lower fields of the personality. Physical, emotional, mental. Then raise the consciousness into the head. Carry the consciousness upward through the astral body and the mind to the soul. Identify the personality consciousness with the soul consciousness and realize that they are one. Assume the attitude of the observer upon the mental plane and throw soul energy down into the center at the base of the spine and then raise the soul energy slowly via the centers in the spine and via the two centers in the head up into the soul body upon the higher mental levels. Recognize the personality is aligned with the soul forming one unit and there is a fusion of the individual soul with the group soul on the level of the soul on its own plane. Then link this heart center in the spine with the heart center upon the mental plane where we find the response to group vibration and feel the group laugh, uniting all the members of the group into one unit. And we sound the OM together as a group. Thank you. Okay, let me make you the presenter, Elena. Okay, you should have show my screen now. There you go. Are you bringing something on your screen? I'm not. What I see is your background. Okay. Well, I'm going to put on my screen. There. Um, you see it? Yes, we do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, today, uh, we will continue 
the discussion of CDP's race as given to her by Master DK and to what degree we are able to identify them in her astrological chart. Now in the last webinar we discussed her soul and personality race and today we will focus on the race of her lower vehicles, the physical, astral and mental, with uh, an additional discussion of discrimination and astral buddhic consciousness. So on your screen uh, we will read from the instruction where DK is telling her about the race on her three lower bodies. Just to refresh our memories that he says your mental body is on the fifth ray and therefore you have an intensely analytical mind. I would however remind you that you are analytical but not discriminating. Ponder on this distinction. Your astral body is governed by the sixth ray and is as yet largely subservient to the will of the personality. This leads you to devote yourself to your personality surroundings and to the conditions which karmically you have evoked. Your physical body is also on the sixth ray which makes it, and therefore your brain, predominantly the servant of your astral body, but it also makes you intuitive or astral buddhic. Therefore, I would have you note that in your case, there is an exception to the usual rule controlling the physical body, for very few physical bodies are on the sixth ray as is yours. And I will just read this that the soul ray is a second ray of love wisdom, the personality ray, the sixth ray of devotion, the ray of the mind, the fifth ray of concrete no science, uh, the ray of the astral body, the sixth ray of devotion, and the ray of the physical body, the sixth ray of devotion. We might just as well reach to the end. It will be clear to you, therefore, that much of your problem can be summed up by the recognition of the relation existing between the personality, the astral body, and the physical body. The physical body and the astral body are therefore automatically the servants of the personality. Yet the relation between the sixth and second rays is so close that the problem of your soul is not insuperably separable in this life. Okay. Now, we start uh, with her mental body, I will put at this point uh, her natal chart on the screen, okay? Uh, as you, as we have just read that uh, DK is telling her there that the fifth ray, uh, mental body, uh, gives her a very intense analytical mind but uh, she is analytical but not discriminating. Now this is very unusual because one of the qualities or strengths of the fifth ray is discrimination. Okay. Now as we know the mind is the high as highest aspect of the personality and acts as an integrating energy of the lower fields. Uh, what we do first uh, is to look at the presence of the fifth ray in her astrological chart 
and because we are dealing with the personality fields, we will consider the wheel turning clockwise. Uh, and in some cases, we also look at the reversed wheel. When we're talking about uh, the ordinary wheel or the wheel of the personality, it's turning clockwise in this direction, okay? And we're starting it from her ascendant this way. And the reversed wheel, it will go anticlockwise, and it's the wheel of the soul consciousness, okay? Uh, it's something which we have done uh, also uh, in the last webinar when we were dealing uh, with her soul and personality race, okay? Now, the fifth ray triangle on the ordinary wheel uh, in a clockwise direction would start with Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Leo. This is the triangle of the fifth ray, okay? Now, the orthodox ruler of these signs are Uranus, uh, which is probably conditioned on its own level by the fifth ray on its mental body. Then it's the Jupiter ruling, ruling uh, Sagittarius and being placed in Sagittarius. And then it's the Sun as ruler of Leo, which is found in Aries there. Uh, even though there is no apparent evidence of the fifth ray on any level of Jupiter, there is strong relation between the fifth and second rays, as we all know, uh, generally speaking even. And you know, the second ray uh, here is uh, uh, conditioning the Sun and Jupiter, okay? So, we found we find the Uranus in Sagittarian decanate of Leo, indicating a powerful fifth ray presence through involvement of two signs of the fifth ray triangle, and that is the Sagittarian decanate and Leo, the sign Leo, and uh, Uranus, which is very powerfully conditioned by the fifth ray. Uh, so this is, I think, the major focal point uh, of fifth ray energy in this triangle. Now, Sun is also found in Sagittarian decanate of Aries, okay? Uh, and is the dispositor of that Uranus because it rules Leo, right? Um, and Leo is placed, uh, and Uranus uh, uh, in Leo is placed on the cusp of the third house, where uh, the Leo is ruling that house, the third house. And as we have worked through the webinars, the retrograde Uranus have moved into the third house. But it's operating basically in both houses, because it's very close uh, to the cusp of the third house, okay? And we know that the third house, uh, you know, uh, is, is dealing with the mental, mental processes, the mental energy there. Now Uranus in Leo is in its detriment and indicates the lessening of the mind, which in this case is symbolized by Uranus. And it's increasing of the uh, soul use and control of the mind by the soul, okay? Now, this indicates, again, the focus of her second ray soul uh, in the fifth ray mind. And if she could consciously utilize it, she would be able to balance and adjust the powerful sixth ray force uh, due to the close relation between the sixth and second rays as DK was telling her in the instruction which we just read. Now we see that Uranus is making a trine to that sun in Aries, right? Uh, and that through this trine, we have a linking of the three and the nine houses 
indicating the lower and higher minds. Uh, and again, these are the uh, two rays, the two signs of the uh, fifth ray triangle. Okay. Now, DK is hinting that the middle decanate of Leo is conditioned by Jupiter, the same planet as is ruling that Sagittarian decanate. Okay. Uh, on both wheels, ordinary and the reversed wheel. So we have a very strong Jupiterian influence coming in here, okay? And on the reverse wheel, it's coming the soul energy, and Jupiter is the esoteric ruler of Aquarius, which is bringing this soul mind here, okay? The son of mind energy. So both wheels are again coming to synthetic uh, uh, relation here because uh, they the energies are, are coming together okay uh, and as i said before even though jupiter doesn't seem to have a fifth ray on its uh, on its own level it is strongly conditioning by the fifth ray transmitted through the signs uh, of the fifth ray triangle where jupiter is the exoteric ruler of sagittarius uh, uh, an esoteric ruler of the uh, Aquarian en energy there, and Leo, uh, and in Leo, the sun is veiling Jupiter on personality level, as a ruler on its lowest level. On a soul level, it is uh, Neptune, and on the monadic it is uranus what we are concerned here is the lowest level because we're dealing with the personality levels here okay so jupiter is coming again even as the veiling planet by the sun okay uh, it is also interesting because jupiter is her secondary soul ruler okay uh, which is now coming primarily through that uh, uh, Aquarian energy on the higher mind, abstract mind, going to the triad in there, through it. Um, so uh, we see again the second and fifth ray coming together from the soul to the mind on a, on a lower and higher expression of it. Um, now, the fifth ray is uh, profoundly susceptible to the energy of the second ray because its, its fusion of knowledge with love gives wisdom. And because all wisdom is knowledge gained by experience and implemented by love. Okay? That's why primarily there is always this relation between, uh, between the fifth and second. Uh, uh, race, even levels, planes, and so on. Uh, we know that she integrated the astral and mental bodies, which uh, brought the fifth ray mind increasingly into control of her sixth ray astral body, becoming the transmitter of illumination from the second ray soul. Because prior to that integration, it was the astral body which was primarily the controlling factor okay uh, for cdp the release from the emotional forces and the powerful six ray force must be achieved through the soul control and its instrument in this battle would be the consecrated discriminative mind that's why it is um, it is important that she develops that discriminative uh, ability. Um, now, in the attainment of the control of the emotional nature and achievement of clear vision and right discernment through right discrimination, she will testify her fitness for the second initiation, which was just in front of her. Uh, this means shifting the level 
from the fourth mental subplane where we find discrimination into the third mental subplane where we find spiritual discernment which goes beyond the personality discrimination and reveals the soul because discernment sees and detects more deeply than discrimination okay now bl uh, if you can um, sure. if you can put yeah put up that chart for me that we uh, uh, briefly that people see what I uh, have just said here there you got it no okay. yeah well I see it uh, if people can see it here not very probably um, we uh, we are relating the physical taste or the second f physical physical uh, plane uh, to the imagination on the second astral plane to the mental discrimination on the fourth mental subplane and to the intuition on the fourth buddhic uh, subplane okay that's it i just want you to people see that what we are basically dealing with the alignment of the uh, of the uh, uh, sense taste it's a discriminative taste here okay so um, according to DK the ruler of the first cancer decanate on the reversed on the reversed wheel is Venus Conditioned on its soul level by the fifth ray representing the mind as the instrument of release from the form of personality. Because reversed will all, always deal with the soul consciousness. Now CD, CDP had to rightly control and use uh, the soul illumined mind in development of detachment and also here of the spiritual discernment which is high aspect ready of the discrimination uh, but she had to arrive at that discernment through the personality discrimination uh, so um, indication of this is venus in its powerful esoteric or soul placement in gemini where is the soul ruler okay and it's placed in the 12th house, which is the subjective inner uh, area uh, linking the second ray transmitted again through Gemini now with the fifth ray conditioning Venus on the soul level. Uh, uh, again, we're coming back to this relationship uh, 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 indicating that the soul has to work through through that uh, fifth ray mental body okay uh, she had to develop pure love and you know the the cdp the 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 capital letter p it's indicating pure love it's one of her keywords in her development formula uh, she had to develop this pure love free from emotional force which was clouding her vision and perception because only true love or wisdom sees with perfect clarity uh, any deficiencies uh, uh, in form or personality and uh, it wisely recognizes those which are not its attention so this is achieved by discrimination separating the contrary vibrations it is not it is not easy to discriminate particularly on a level of of helping when we are helping uh, especially on the level of personality uh, her love uh, clouded by emotion was not able to discriminate because she was not able to see clearly and with detachment and you know detachment standing for the letter d was another major issue 
to develop this quality of detachment, okay? So she was not responding to the soul vibration uh, to those she loved, but only to their personalities. She did not recognize the soul in them. And so she was holding back herself and the people she loved also, okay? Uh, those of you who follow the webinars remember that uh, uh, we were dealing with the aspect, the three aspects of harmlessness, and here uh, I would um, bring into focal point the one of those aspects, which is the uh, completed point of view, uh, which refers to the function of the soul as an observer in the three worlds, and the completed all-around picture. Uh, such an observer gradually attains. Now, this is brought about by the development of two qualities, detachment and discrimination, and she lacked both of them, because only this will create a clear channel for the inflow of the pure love. So you see in here we have three qualities which she had to develop really, pure love, detachment, and discrimination, okay? So, um, uh, I don't know where, if we have to put again that chart uh, which we have seen because we looked at the imagination there, uh, which is on the second, uh, second astral subplane, is the astral equivalent to mental discrimination, which it must be uh, ultimately transmuted into intuition. That's why I wanted in that graph that you see, you know, this relationship between, um, uh, between the imagination, discrimination, and intuition. And it is the sense of taste that begins to control during the discriminating process. That's why the alignment of, of the lower to higher senses here, okay, from the physical sense up to the intuition for this disciple. Um, uh, because, as I said, the taste begins to control during the discriminating process where we start to realize the illusion of matter and form, okay? And during this discriminating process, the soul is also developing intuition, and through this faculty of intuition, it recognizes its own essence in and under all forms. And when this would be uh, uh, achieved, this quality uh, of discrimination, and then uh, utilization and developing of the intuition, then she would be able to recognize the soul uh, mainly in those she loves because the emotional and sixth, the sixth ray devotional energy was preventing this clear vision for her. Okay? Um, so uh, we, have, we have the second and fourth subplanes and six, uh, six planes and force planes involved in this alignment of the uh, physical uh, physical taste, uh, then the imagination on the astral, then uh, the discrimination, and then we coming to the intuition. And this is reflecting uh, the two four six line uh, of her astral buddhic uh, connection, okay, and connection there uh, consciousness. Um, Intuition concerns the unity and is the capacity of the soul to contact other souls. Uh, it is not a faculty which we can contact the personality, okay? It is intuition which CDP had to utilize, you see, through this discriminative process. Uh, and this would also enable her uh, to develop the spiritual discernment. Uh, that's why she had a six-ray brain, which, as DK was telling her, makes her intuitive, okay, and astral buddhic. Um, so, 
the, the choice of a different array for a particular level on the lower fields is only available to the aspiring disciple. And that is particularly for a reason uh, to increase the service uh, capacities or, uh, you know, it's individual for each disciple. So uh, here, unusual six-ray brain conditioning energy. When making choices and decision, you know, we need right discrimination. Uh, and, you know, the clarity of mind, objectivity and detachment are needed here. And these she needed to develop, okay? Now, when we're talking about discrimination, astrologically is the primarily uh, Virgo. Uh, uh, and discrimination is based on right values, priorities and essential, which is Taurus. And the right, right choice and decision is Libra, okay? I mean, I just point, I, I point these, these um, I can point these signs, you know, Virgo, Libra, and Taurus, okay? These are the primary, uh, primarily signs, uh, without going any further with it, uh, which is uh, generally related to these necessary uh, qualities in, in the process of the discrimination. Now, uh, Taurus indicates also accumulation of knowledge and its orthodox ruler is Earth. Uh, and Earth is conditioned uh, possibly by fifth ray on its mental level. Now Earth is placed in Libra, okay? And Libra rules the mental unit or concrete mind on the fourth mental subplane where we also find discrimination. Okay, so here is a powerful relationship uh, indicated also astrologically. Now, Virgo is related uh, particularly to analysis, also to discrimination, a factual detailed knowledge. Now, Mercury, uh, uh, to, uh, Virgo is ruled by Mercury, okay, uh, placed in Aries over here. And Aries corresponds to the mental body. Actually, Aries rules the highest subplane of the mental plane. It's the summit where she was building her tower. And the summit of it was reaching the highest subplane or the atomic subplane of mental plane. Okay? Now, the, through, through Aries has transmitted the first and seventh ray. Uh, um, and it could be a part of the conditioning subrays of her fifth ray mind, because the lower three fields, uh, physical, physical, uh, astral, and 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 mental, have many subrays, many subrays coming from different levels of, uh, you know. Uh, uh, astrologically or from the subplanes uh, primarily uh, and so but we don't go into it uh, because it's rather detailed and uh, already <laughs> I am going into into details already here so I don't want to carry that any further. Uh, her intensely analyc analytical fifth ray mind astrologically is, is evidence primarily by the Pluto semi-square that Mercury in Aries, okay? Uh, and by the six-ray energy of excess and intensity, uh, which is in this case, we can take the mass as the orthodox ruler of Aries, dispositing, you know, that Mercury, uh, the mental, uh, mental energy there, uh, and providing the sixth ray which is uh, transmitted uh, uh, through mass, okay? Uh, and it's conjuncting Pluto, okay? And Pluto is a planet which condition also the mental body. Uh, a very, a very unusual 
that the, you know that the Pluto is also involved with the with the mental energy, uh, and it is also conditioning the astral body and and the solar plexus center, um, bringing particularly uh, you know the first ray or on its personality level, but it is also conditioned by the fifth ray. Uh, I would say that uh, Mercury, Mars, and Pluto could be conditioned on by the fifth ray on their mental levels. The first ray personality of Pluto reflects the first ray transmitted through Aries and indicates a possible first ray subray on the mental body. Okay? Uh, her surrounding harmful thought forms were draining her vitality, the DK was telling her, and were destructive not only to her, but also to other people. Now, this indicates the first ray destructive will of Pluto on the mind, confirming possible first ray subray uh, on the mental body. Okay? Uh, we also note that the fifth ray triangle, uh, Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Leo uh, is expressed through three mutable houses, third, six, and nines. Um, and you remember we were dealing with a mutable cross in relation to the second ray soul and sixth ray personality, which we discussed in the previous webinar. And so the mutable cross is linking now through the fifth ray energy uh, through the houses expressed by the fifth ray energy, where, the, where, where actually the fifth ray is uh, utilized, okay? Uh, that would lead, you know, to no, number of things synthesizing together uh, to bring a further understanding of this energy, okay? What we are what we are basically dealing with uh, to find uh, the approach how to look in the astrological chart for the presence of the rays which we are given. Because in the last webinar, those of you who were participating, you know, I said uh, we need to establish uh, the soul and personality ray prior. To reading of the chart. We don't discover the, the race from the chart because we need to know the person prior to reading the astrological chart. Okay? So now we will look at the six ray astral body. Um, uh, and the planets ruling the six ray uh, astral body are primarily Mars, Neptune, and Pluto. In this case, uh, which uh, indicate a possible six ray ruling the astral bodies of these planets. I am using a possibility or probability these words when I am indicating the rays on the level of the planets. Okay, because they are not, we cannot, we have not 100% confirmation from DK. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is my uh, my hypothetical uh, 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 understanding here, which I am uh, trying to also confirm here uh, by the race uh, uh, of this disciple, which uh, we know are from the master, okay, and how they would blend with the race of the planets. Now. Uh, Pluto, conjunction with that mass in Taurus, in the sign of desire, is the focal point of the sixth ray uh, force, uh, because both planets are ruling the astral body and the solar plexus. So this is the focal point of, of the astral force here, okay? And Taurus, as itself, corresponds to the astral body. It corresponds also 
to the physical body where the form is exalted there, right? So, Mars Pluto are also rulers of Scorpio. And the Scorpio and Taurus is a polarity which deals with the desire and its transmutation, okay? And eventually of its ending, okay? Uh, and Scorpio is one of the signs of the water triangle, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, which was very much conditioning this disciple, okay? Uh, and the sixth ray primarily through Mars and Neptune uh, uh, dealing uh, or relating with this water triangle, which is very much related, you know, to the astral plane, energies, and the astral body. Um, Mars Pluto conjunction is indicates also a very powerful first ray dynamic astral force, uh, you know, in the sign of desire Taurus. And Taurus, uh, ruled by Vulcan, uh, you know, uh, from the esoteric, uh, from the soul level, um, uh, Vulcan, to my present understanding, could be conditioned on its astral level by the first ray. Okay? So, um, as we see that the Mars-Pluto conjunction is found on the Capricorn decanet of Taurus. Okay? Uh, which represents the first decanet on the ordinary wheel, okay, uh, ruled by Saturn. And Saturn is probably conditioned by the first ray on its astral level. And this indic indicate a, a probable first ray sub, sub ray also on her six ray astral body, okay. Um, Saturn is on the th placed in the third decanet of Pisces on the ordinary wheel, right? Uh, and it is ruled by Mars, according to DK. And thus linking Saturn with Mars by the square aspect between these two planets. Okay. Um, now Saturn, Saturn, uh, decanet of Taurus on the reverse wheel is the third decanet. And first decanet on the ordinary wheel. So we have two decanets, uh, two, uh, two wheels uh, involved in this process. Uh, personality and soul energies are meeting, okay? Uh, and Saturn in Pisces, you know, indicates the karma of emotional attachments which has to die within her pers personality. Because also Pisces is the last sign where it's a completion process, okay? Something has to be completed, always, generally speaking, okay? So uh, the, the synthesizing uh, uh, of B, both wheels is this mass square Saturn uh, aspect, basically. Um, Neptune, and Saturn uh, sextile, are uh, in sextile, okay? And they are bringing together first ray through Saturn and sixth ray through Neptune as possible ray energies conditioning these two planets on the astral levels and indicates uh, their presence in the in her astral body, okay? We know it's the sixth ray there, but 
again, we have an indication of a first ray here. Uh, a mass Jupiter Saturn energies on both wheels are synthesized through the T square between a uh, mass Saturn and Jupiter T square. Okay? Uh, and uh, emphasize the struggle uh, for control of the powerful six ray force by the second ray soul indicated by Jupiter ruling the first uh, decanate of Sagittarius over here uh, and also of Pisces on the reversed wheel. Okay, we are talking the Jupiter as a ruler of the decanate, Jupiter, uh, Sagittarian, Sagittarian decanate, but also as a first decanate on uh, the reversed wheel together with the first decanate of Pisces being ruled by Jupiter given by DK as rulers indicating them, okay? Uh, and because it's re uh, reverse decanate or soul, de uh, soul reverse wheel, we are dealing with the soul energies there, okay? Uh, now, the karmic conditions uh, which she evoked in her personality surroundings are primarily uh, based on, on the control of the astral body by the will of the six ray personality um, and thus the strong influence of the karmic planet Saturn and Mars ruling not only the physical and astral bodies but the personality as a whole. We can consider both planet Mars and Saturn uh, ruling uh, the, the personality okay and also of the uh, physical body uh, but the will aspect of the personality is provided primarily by Saturn with a first ray conditioning on its own level of personality okay and this is the confirmation basically of it uh, that it could be uh, that ray uh, on ruling on uh, personality level of Saturn. Now, I will share with you something which I have so far haven't mentioned on any of the webinars, uh, but dealing now with these sub rays here, um, you see DK is hinting at the sub rays uh, through his instruction to the disciples. But we need to we need to find them, notice them, and recognize them. Okay. Now, to my uh, understanding, uh, he indicates probable first sabre on her fifth ray mind, which we have already detected uh, through astrology, and possible first ray sabre on her astral body. Okay. Um, and I'm going to put on your screen um, the uh, passage where he's telling her this. Your mind, as a result of the glamour, may be ever restless and shifting, but the glamour is the result of potent emotional thinking and of a prolonged attentiveness to the circumstances of your physical plane life. The same attentiveness and potency of thought directed away from your circumstances and to the things of the soul will free you. Now, this is a passage from Dinah 1, 509 
from one of uh, uh, the instructions given to her. Okay? Now, what we see here, I have highlighted these two, uh, which I would take as an indication of subrace on the astral body and mental body. Okay? Because he say your mind is a fifth ray mind. As a result of the glamour, is a sixth ray. Maybe ever restless and shifting is Mercury in Aries. But the glamour is the result of potent emotional thinking. Now here he is with a possible first ray sabre on her astral body. He is bringing Kamamanas first, uh, linking the rays 1, 5, and 6, okay? Because, because Kamamanas here would be ruled by Venus on its lowest expression of the mind, okay? Uh, with the Venus mass, a Venus mass conjunction over here, okay? Um, and Pluto, semi-square to that, Mercury in Aries is involved also, okay? And Pluto conjunction to that mass. The energies which we have already discussed, okay? Um, and mass being a square, which we can add now towards the mass square Saturn. Now we deal with Venus, uh, uh, you know, uh, in relation to, to the Kamamanasig mind going to, to the higher level of the soul mind there, okay? Uh, and with the Saturn conditioned by the first ray on its astral body. Uh, now on on the ordinary wheel, the first decanate of, of Taurus, where we find the mass, is ruled by Saturn. Also by Saturn, uh, just uh, uh, dealing with the decanate of Taurus, okay? So we, we see the relation between the sixth ray, mass, sixth ray, astral body, and Saturn, first ray, astral body, through the mass, Saturn square also. Okay, which already, uh, you know, I pointed out before. Uh, and a prolonged attentiveness is uh, on a personality uh, a level of the sixth ray transmitted through Sagittarian energy ways, the one-pointed direction to the circumstances of a physical plane la uh, uh, life, it's the mass, involvement of mass there, okay? Uh, which is also, the, uh, you know, ruling the uh, uh, sixth ray physical body and, and the physical, physical plane. Now, when he says the same attentiveness, the same, I should, you know, bring this again, the same attentiveness, uh, you know, the attentiveness, now he is, shifting the energy with this sentence, you know, going from the lower to the higher energy here, where the inner attentiveness has to be to the voice of her soul and potency of thought is the probable first ray subray of the fifth ray mind directed away from your circumstances and to the things of the soul will free you. So the Venus fifth ray as a son of mine is coming uh, in its placement, uh, esoteric or soul placement in Gemini. Here, okay. Conjunct mass in Taurus. Uh, which is conditioned by the first ray, first ray on its soul level, mass, okay, 
where the freedom from the attachment to the desire of the form life would come through the first ray of Vulcan, which is most probably placed in Aries, okay, but now on a soul level of the Vulcan energy, okay? Uh, because it's the esoteric ruler of Taurus. And uh, as I mentioned, I think before, possibly uh, first ray or fifth ray, uh, uh, Vulcan could be con conditioned also on mental levels, okay? So, uh, this is this is an example of a subray where DK is hinting through through its uh, presence. Okay, and I give you one more one more uh, 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 one more just one sentence to an, uh, some other disciple where he said to the disciple, knowledge must, however be translated into wisdom through the dynamic power of a living love. Now, this is a classic for me, first ray sabre, for that disciple, okay? I can't, uh, I can't tell you on which of the bodies was that first ray because I haven't uh, worked in detail with this disciple. Uh, but neither, neither CDP or this disciple had any first ray conditioning on any of the uh, ray of, of the like physical, uh, astral, mental, personality or so. There were no first rays, okay? So in this way, uh, I, I thought I will bring this uh, idea to your attention that when you read the instructions he is giving to the disciples, he is indicating the sabres. Only we need to recognize them, okay, for such. And as we are going through the, through the astrology, we also see it, see these rays, sabres astrologically, okay, and uh, uh, for, for, for myself, uh, I see a lot of confirmation of a hypothetical uh, ideas which some of us uh, other esoteric astrologists have uh, for, the, for the race conditioning the planets on their own levels, okay? So, now we come to the sixth ray physical body and the brain, because when the ray of the physical body is given, it's automatically uh, ruling the brain also, okay? And uh, we have uh, read in the, in the instruction there that uh, DK uh, is telling her that, that how very rare is to have six ray physical body as hers. And this is giving us also a hint here that, you know, how careful we have to be if we put some other ray than is the usual ray for that level, which in this case, it's either the third or seven ray on the physical body, okay? And so it has to be the decision of the soul which is only available to the aspiring disciple, okay? Now, the sign Cancer, it's, you know, her rising sign, most important sign, uh, uh, corresponds also to the dense physical body, which, as I say, it's generally ruled by everybody, DK say, as a humanity, uh, outside of the disciples, by the ray three and seven. And these are the rays which are also transmitted through cancer, okay? Um, uh, this also further emphasizing the first decanate of cancer, cancer, cancer decanate, ruled by moon, okay? Which is conditioning the form life. So we, here we have through that cancer, 
in the rising decanate and the moon, okay, uh, conditioning the form life, basically, okay? Uh, we have already established that her moon is veiling a six-ray planet Neptune. This, uh, this uh, as an astrologer, each astrologer has to intuitively and analytically or whatever uh, available tools, uh, you know, ascertain uh, which is the veiling planet. Is it Vulcan, Neptune, or Uranus? Okay. Now, uh, we find the moon in Piscean decanate of Scorpio, which brings Neptune as the as the Piscean decanate. Okay, uh, ruler, because also. Uh, Pisces transmit six ray and with an added six ray mass as the dispositor of that moon in Scorpio, ma mass rule Scorpio, transmit the six ray. We have a very powerful relationship uh, and you know moon is exalted in Taurus, where is the mass, exalting of the form aspect uh, that and uh, 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 Taurus is also corresponding to the physical body. We have a powerful indication of the six ray conditioning, uh, ruling the physical body, okay? Because mass is a ruler of physical body, as is the moon. Uh, so, uh, mass is also ruling on the ordinary wheel, the first decanate of Aries related to the physical body. Okay. Now, when it comes to, to the brain, to the six ray brain, it's the primary planet uh, 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 for, for this disciple with the six ray brain would be Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is one of the planets ruling brain, okay? But the six ray brain would come through that Neptune, Pisces energy, condition, relating that Uranus, uh, Saturn, sorry. Um, uh, the needed control and a conscious direction by the second ray soul of the six ray brain is primarily indicated by two triangles here. Ascendant, Neptune, and Saturn, because they are all in aspect. Saturn trine, Ascendant, and Neptune sextile and Neptune sextile to Saturn, okay? And then the other one is Neptune, Saturn, Jupiter. Neptune, Saturn sextile, Saturn, Jupiter square, and Jupiter, Neptune, Quincunx. These are the primarily energies involved uh, uh, with the six ray brain in relation to the second ray soul. When we are talking about a physical brain, we need to consider the three physical glands in the head, okay? Which is the pineal, pituitary, and carotid glands. And the focal point of utilization for CDP was the pituitary body and its externalized etheric ajna center, which are both conditioned by the six ray. And, you know, both are related uh, to the second ray, primarily the pituitary body and the heart center. 
And in building of her garden upon the mental plane, she utilized the art of visualization and imagination uh, with the aim to focus her attention in the region of the Ajna center of the pituitary body. Okay? We see another reason why the six ray brain was needed for this disciple. Okay? Now, the fifth ray mental energy represents the higher correspondence of the physical brain, which in this case is the pituitary body conditioned by the six ray. So we here through this, we have a relationship between the fifth ray mind and the six ray brain from the perspective of the alignment energies, you see. Uh, and CDP's six ray brain was, as we are told by DK, predominantly the servant of her six ray astral body, but it also made her intuitive or astral buddhic. And here we have another reason for that six ray brain. Uh, we are getting a further information basically why the soul has chosen such an unusual ray for the brain here. Now, astral buddhic process appears when there is a sympathetic or immediate understanding and identification with personality reactions, which is connected with the solar plexus activity. And when the love nature is unfolded or unfolding, the solar plexus becomes the seed of the intuitive faculty. So we have the astral and buddhic planes connected here, okay, through that process. There is an in, invol involvement of the lower aspect of love, that of emotional and sensitive astral response, and the pure love of the soul, the pure love which he needed to develop, okay? as I said before, is one of her keywords in her development formula. Now, this astral sympathetic sensitivity is fallible, obviously, and frequently mistaken in its interpretation because it is based upon the reactions of the solar plexus and is carried upon the astral plane. But in its highest form, it becomes the factor which makes, uh, which makes intuitive sensi sensitivity possible. You see? That's why the six ray brain was making her intuitive and astral buddhic. Uh, it is at this stage, you see, CDP, who was sensitive to con contacts, found it upon the astral buddhic consciousness. But these contacts for CDP were carried within the mental substance, utilizing the three aspects of the mind upon the mental plane, the concrete mind, the soul mind, and the abstract mind, because that's where she was building her garden, okay? Uh, this involved on the physical plane also the activity of the pituitary body as an expression of that energy and also the use of the Ajna center as the organ of visualization and organization of the process of that building there. Now we see that the, she has a, a very difficult equipment uh, from the perspective of the race here. She's predominantly under six ray force within two, four, six line emphasis. Only the fifth ray mind is linking her to the one, three, five, seven line. And the second ray soul 
is the only ray of aspect, the higher rays one, two, three, and the rays five and six are the rays of attribute, the lesser, we co consider them the minor uh, ray energies, uh, uh, conditioning her on four levels of her personality, basically emphasizing even stronger the personality focus of these energies, okay? Now, where all lines of influence are related and similar, like in this case, there is always a tendency to negativity and a failure to assume a positive attitude particularly towards the soul. That's why DK was constantly strengthening her confidence and assuring her she didn't fail because she always thought she was failing. She was not good enough, okay? And the positive impulse is used by the six ray brain, which is sensitive to the buddhic plane. What she, also, what she also needs is more of a positive vibration of the first ray line of energy, which the fifth ray mind opens her the door. So she needs to utilize the will aspect of love through her fifth ray mind, and we have detected the astrological indication, as we have already looked at the first ray as a possible subray of her fifth ray mind, okay? It must be the power of love, or love powerfully applied to evoke right conditions in her circumstances and physical environment. And we are told in only in the stress of circumstances can the full power of the soul can be evoked. She didn't express upon the physical plane the reality which she was as a soul on the inner levels. That's why the needed focus of the second ray soul into her sixth ray brain. Okay? She made a transition from the cella in the light, where she developed will to laugh, and entered accepted discipleship in that life, where she needs to now develop the power to laugh. Completely different level of the expression of that laugh. Okay? This power of love would facilitate the focus of the second ray soul via the fifth ray mind into the sixth ray brain, indicating the process of the soul mind brain alignment, which is basically going on from the first to the third initiation primarily. Okay? Uh, the brain is at first controlled by the ray of the mind and then by the ray of the soul, okay? As we progressing upon the path. Now, we have dedicated one whole webinar to the discussion of the brain, which those of you who are interested can listen to or download it from the Makara website. Okay, where we went into great detail of it in relation to this disciple, particularly. Now, uh, Master DK, I would I will conclude with these statements here, uh, that Master DK is telling us that through utilization of the illumined mind and intuitive perception, the esoteric astrologer would endeavor to synthesize all the energies in the chart into one working wholeness, 
which would aid the astrologer in deepening of his understanding of the soul's purpose of a disciple in that particular incarnation. Now we do know that spiritual intelligence and an illumined mind are the definite signs that the disciple is ready to take the second initiation. Uh, my understanding of this is that spiritual intelligence indicates a functioning of an adequate degree of the intuition through the soul. Where the abstract mind is developed and sensitive to the energies of the spiritual triad and can become the seed of the spiritual or atmic will which starts to be consciously for the first time utilized at the second initiation and the concrete mind is being illumined by the soul opening the door to the higher buddhic illumination now to my understanding this would require an esoteric astrologer towards which dk is hinting us there in that what i already said uh, which would have to be at a stage of accepted discipleship, and I'm not going into detail as to what part of that accepted discipleship, uh, uh, would be taking or has already taken the second initiation. Okay? Uh, who would have to be preferably also an esoteric psychologist? with an adequate comprehension of the science of the centers or chakras. Now, that is a high order for any of us, okay? What would be uh, required to actually synthesize the whole psychological ray energies with astrological energies, not only of the signs, but the rays of the planets, uh, that is not easy. So, um, with these thoughts, I will conclude this webinar and open the floor for any comments or questions. Thank you for your patience and understanding. Well, come on. There we go. Thank you very much. Please go ahead, Eva. <laughs> Hi, Elena. It's Eva. Hi. Hi, Eva. <laughs> I just wanted. To, I wanted so much to thank you. I loved this webinar. I thought your your connections were so good, and I found it very enlightening. So thank you so much. Thank you, Eva. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Go ahead, please, Michael. Hello, Elena. Hello, Michael. <laughs> you have done such a marvelous job in analyzing this particular disciple. I'm curious as to how the other disciples may um, confirm all these different aspects and, and things that you've been able to, to uh, bring out from this particular one. You know what you're asking? A tall order. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a job for one person. <laughs> it sounds like a group effort. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, uh, one would need to really uh, go through all the instructions to all those disciples, select uh, you know, uh, go uh, with a particular topic, you know, with a particular aspect, and they are all different for each disciple. Uh, for example, there was an, one another disciple who had a six-ray brain, mm -hmm. okay, which I haven't worked yet 
on that disciple, but he also uh, has problem with discrimination. Okay? Interesting. But from completely different reason from this disciple. Uh huh. Okay. Where here the sixth ray was more on the devotional side of energy, in his case was the group idealism problem. Okay. 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 So you know it's not uh, you know we we can find similarities on some aspects, but we find a lot of differences. Okay. A, a tremendous amount of variables yes yes and uh, you know it's a lifetime job <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah <laughs> uh, but but it, it's the best learning process for all of us and it I, I can see how it can also confirm the hypotheses that uh, that we're bringing out yes yes well it was it was a new experience for me too so mar marvelous i appreciate all the the uh it must be hundreds of hours of work for each webinar you know <laughs> <laughs> well you know i don't know if it's hundred but it's many many hours of preparation and research you know uh, well all of us i'm sure appreciate the the effort and uh the presentation and the little bit that we can retain, you know? <laughs> oh, I appreciate the presence and I appreciate, you know, that I can inspire uh, all, all others who are interested about this, you know, because mm -hmm. uh, we need to share what we've got, basically. You know? I'm glad that they are recorded so that we can go back and, and um, pick up a little more. That's it. That's it. Because, you know, one cannot uh, digest it, you know, just listening once to it and, uh, you know. Exactly. So. It's... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. You know, you remind us, Elena, that, um, well, it's an old American saying, I don't know how well it translates to other language, but there's more than one way to skin a cat is the phrase and basically what it means is um, just as you were describing that you can read one instruction and look at one chart and you can get one thing out of it you can intuit uh, the information and you can see how it's presented for this particular disciple but that doesn't mean that it's one size fits all it means that there's indications astrologically but they can present in different ways and yes. as an as an astrologer um, you constantly are reminding me in these kind of webinars um, that it all has to be looked at in this holistic way and not necessarily the individual pieces um, because then you see that bigger mosaic and how those pieces all fit together. And, and I think it was very good what you brought out that DK mentions that the astrologer of the future has to look at everything. They have to look at the psychology. They have to look at the astrology. They have to look at the uh, universal astrology and they have to look at, you know, the the centers and the etheric body and and the planes you know you brought up the That's planes it. and showed us the planes and the relationships between the senses and all of these are such critical parts of what you've been showing us and i for one never looked at it in that way before so thank you there you are i am glad i have inspired you now <laughs> thank you bl does anybody else have anything they would like to say? I don't see any hands or comments. Um, I would like to say that um, we've got the conference coming up and Ellen is going to be traveling, so we're not going to have another webinar until September. Um, so we will have a little break. Uh, 
yes, and we would start with the new instruction. Okay, we have closed the instruction for uh, for July 1937. So it would be the following instruction we start to deal with. And what exactly, you know, uh, at this precise moment, I don't know. I haven't looked into it, but got plenty of time <laughs> to, to find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you all for attending and thank you again, Elena, for a wonderful presentation. Um, yes, if, thank if, you everybody, myself, for participation and my technical support, la ladies here, Joe and BL, uh, without yes. whom I couldn't function. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe, behind the scenes. we You don't always see what we're doing, but trust me, we're doing things behind the scenes here. Um, <laughs> okay, if nobody else has anything else, then I'm going to close the webinar. Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs>